Good morning, Tayo. Good morning, Udoka. Yeah, how's it been? It's been fine. Uh, I'm just trying to cope with well, this coronavirus um, situation that is causing so much lockdown across different states in Nigeria. Yes, we all have. For Cross River, uh, we just had to end our own lockdown yesterday. Oh, wow. Wow. I hope everybody's keeping safe right there. We've got no choice right now. Um, life is very important, so we all have to be very safe. Very true. Now let's talk about Odioni Gallo. There's a, a gist flying around that he just might be signing a permanent deal with Manchester United. Is this a pleasing news for the United fans? Um, it should be, especially if you're a Nigerian. Um, it's a very piece of good of uh, news, and everyone is hoping that, um, let me call it the sensible thing now, uh, as a Nigerian, and I'm, I know I share the thoughts of so many Nigerians, Signing of Johnny Gallo by Manchester United on a permanent deal would just be the icing on the cake. Of course, it was a shocker uh, when the deal came through, uh, the loan deal came through. But um, for what all is done at Manchester United, I as a person feel like um, it deserves that permanent contract. Uh, it's, it's been able to, close to the kind of effect that um, Eric Larson had, uh, when he came on that short loan to Manchester United under Alex Ferguson, is what Ojo Igalo has been able to bring through. Uh, you know, he, he came in at a point where United were beat down yeah. with the loss of uh, Marcus Rashford to injury, the inconsistency of Antonio Marshall, um, a, a very close to dead midfield that had Pogba that was injured. So he, he needed somebody to really, really lift the dressing room and, of course, add some impact to the team. A whole lot of people say, yes, um, Bruno Fernandes uh, brought that. But I think for Johnny Gallo on his part also, it brought a bit of new mood uh, uh, to, to the club. Of course, United also had an increase in fans, especially from the African sector. So maybe you say um, for the five days and um, if, in, in the long run translating to the financial part, it was a good move for United. Hmm. But right. the permanent move is another different ball game entirely. And I think United uh, should be taking all this. Uh, should, be, should be taking the opportunity to sign him permanently. One thing with Adia Igalo is, uh, apart from filling in the boots of, um, of um, Marcus Rashford, Rashford, we knew the fact that he was coming in as, as, as a backup. And he's coming well and done very, very well. Four goals uh, as much that he's played. Three of them, when it's, um, it, most of those goals came when he started in three of those matches. Yeah. So it, it just shows you that it's somebody that can deliver more when you give him the opportunity. Yeah. But even if he's not starting, you can look to the bench and have somebody uh, that you can depend on. And that's one thing that's special about signings, signing, especially loan signings. You want to see people that you can depend on when you're in a bit of crisis, when you're in a bit of problem, where you need sometimes to come off the bench and change things. And yeah. that's what John Igalo gives you. So, whether he's starting or coming from the bench, is a decent quality any day, any time. Mm -hmm. And I'm also saying it looks like the best time for Manchester United to time down uh, to, to a permanent contract. Because in the last two years, John Igalo has been in the form of his life. Yeah. From the qualifiers of the African Cup of Nations, where he met, he met as the highest goal scorer, to the Nations Cup proper, uh, where he also helped Nigeria to the third place. Uh, he continued that form with his Chinese club, and um, he's continued that form also when he's moved to, the, uh, to Manchester, Manchester United. United. So you look at the form period right now, you feel it's the best decision for United to sign him permanently. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, you've got somebody that's got experience of the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, and that showed in this uh, little period of the loan. He didn't need too much time to settle in. He just come in and does the business. Uh, and um, I also look at it from the tactical angle. It's got a different uh, uh, type of game, type of gameplay. It's a different kind of striker to what Manchester United uh, has got. So, uh, it's somebody that can give you different options when you are looking at it from the tactical angle. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not very pacey. But it's got a very, very good sense of positioning. It, it, it's um, strike rate is something to be proud of. Yeah. And um, it's very, very clinical. I was seeing that in the quality of goals discussed for United so far. Very so true. all of these, uh, I, I think it's a no-brainer for Manchester United that Ojoy Gallo needs to be signed on a permanent contract. 
Wow. And you look at the kind of um, love he's been able to get. Um, it, it's very, very hard to see former Manchester United players who are some sort of demigods right now. Mm. It, it's very hard to see them uh, uh, endorsing the player. So for, for like 90% of them to have come out to admit that Ojoy Gilo has surprised them uh, and, and he's got their backing, uh, I think all of this just adds up to the fact that um, Ojoy Gallo has got the quality and I think United should be signing panel. Very true. Thank you very much for your thoughts right there, um, Tayo Lukumbi, all the way from Calabar. All right, do enjoy, much, do enjoy the rest of your day and always stay safe and stay sanitized. Yeah, that's a Manchester United fan, uh, a mouthful, I must say. He, he said a whole lot. He can keep going on and on and on. He's one person who supports Man U to the core. Whatever happens, good or bad, he's uh, an ardent Manchester United fan. And, of course, he's also sharing his joy in the fact that Ojene Gallo just might be signing a permanent deal. So good one for Manchester United, good one for Nigeria. But we're still hoping to see him play again for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Well, Genero hasn't said anything yet concerning Ojene Gallo, but I, I just feel like he deserves a chance if he, if he wants to come back of course his place is still open to play and teach the younger strikers the likes of Victor Simen how the game goes definitely because right now he's a veteran he's True. 30 years old he's in the form of his career yeah. right now he's got a bag load of experience under him he knows how to balance international football uh -huh. duties as well as club duties yeah. i know it was his decision to say okay you know what i want to step down for a while probably mm -hmm. i should give room open for the younger ones younger to come ones. in but then you know what there's a period for strikers whereby they are going th going through metamorphosis because they are not at their peak yet. Victor Osimhen is just 22. He's not yet close to his peak. Mm. The raw talent is still there. He's not the finished product there. Yeah. But then with Igalu, if Igalu is in the squad, Igalu is there to help the attackers like Chukwizi, Osimhen, Kalu, Samo Kalu, Samo and Kalu. just help them get that finished product into them, show them the way, and eventually leave the way for them and then he can live properly. All right, good, um, good move for Johnny Gallo and, of course, Manchester United.